Hey everybody and welcome to the Brilliant Marketing with Mary show. I'm Mobile Mary or Mary Barnett and I'm super thrilled for you, be, for you to be here today because we're talking about the gram. Yes, talking about Instagram today and I have the leading expert of Instagram and all the hacks that really I'm super excited because this is the title of the show. Okay, you're going to be super excited because it is how to post less on Instagram for more business. Less is more, people. Less is more. And I'm so excited to hear how to do this today by our lovely guest, Katie Brinkley. But before I bring her up, um, I just want to let you know, like, we we do the show every Thursday. Um, it's going to uh, go live inside my Facebook page, in my group, on all the places. Um, but I really want to give you really quality information that's going to help you up-level your business because that's what I do. I have another brilliant idea for you, and that is our company name. Um, and so I hope that if there's anything we can do for you, uh, please, uh, in the comments or send me a DM and I sure would love to help you. And um, Katie also is willing to help as well. So we're going to talk about her and all the amazing. But before I bring her up, there might be one person in the world who doesn't know who she is because she's pretty amazing. Uh, so let me give a short uh, introduction to her. Um, her name is Katie Brinkley, and she has been leveraging social media to grow audiences and income, which is the more, most important part, right, um, for over 19 years. And she looks 21. So She's amazing. Since the time of MySpace, believe it or not, she has helped her clients build a strategy to attract the right followers and generate consistent inbound leads in as little as one hour a week. What? Yes. And she's going to share that with you today. <laughs> From building corporate level growth strategies for AT&T and DirecTV to implementing done for you social media for entrepreneurs tech startups, and consultants, Katie has been at the forefront the, in the changes on how buyers engage on social media. Utilizing her platform agnostic strategies, Katie's clients have been able to see bottom line results at every stage in the sales process, which is absolutely incredible. And she's the coolest person in the world. You'll, you'll see this in a minute. Katie's history of radio journalism mixed with her social aptitude allows her to bring a unique insight and leverage her client stories to the forefront of their social strategies. So I am super thrilled to introduce the beautiful, the one, the only Katie Brinkley. Yay! <laughs> and I just want to keep you in my back pocket saying I look 21. I'll take that all day. So thank yeah. you for that introduction. <laughs> it's true. It's true, though. And I've met you in person. And seriously, when you said you've been doing this, or not, I'm like, no, you're not. Liar. <laughs> you look so young and beautiful. And you have two beautiful girls. And so all about the it's all about the human connections. Right. I mean, social media is just like the doorway into someone's life. So. I love that. One million percent, one million percent. And yeah, when I started, it was, you know, MySpace was the big thing. And I worked in radio at the time. And, you know, at the time, MySpace was mostly for bands. And so that's why. That's oh, why right. Yeah, I, I know, say, right? <laughs> I, I never got into MySpace. I literally was like, eh, you know, and then in retrospect, I was like, oh, I probably should have checked that out. I just, I was raising kids at the time. So I was like, eh, whatever. <laughs> Well, if so at the radio station, so I worked at the radio station, we had to get bands to send us their music for free. And everyone was writing, they were using pen and paper oh, um, and sending handwritten letters to ask people to send us their music. And I was like, well, this doesn't seem very efficient. Why don't I just go on MySpace? And that's when I really saw how quickly connections can happen, how fast community can form. And I was addicted. I loved, I loved the aspect of making friends with strangers on the internet, um, <laughs> but, but in a non-creepy <laughs> <Sure>. way. <laughs> but they were more than six feet apart. So that was okay. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yes. Well, that's fantastic. And when I read about, I mean, we talked about that. Um, I mean, talking about a million things, but in your bio, I didn't really realize you worked for a radio station. So what did you do for the radio station? So I was the post game. So I've, I've worked at a couple of them, but my, uh, my my dream job was to be the post game reporter, and I landed that job right out of college. So uh, while I was in college, I worked at the radio station, uh, eight eight fifty KOA, and like I was saying before, like part of our job was to get fans to send us their music and all that. And right after I graduated, I was I landed my dream job working for the 
the sports station here in Denver, and I was the post game reporter. So I got to go into the locker room and post game interviews with the Broncos and Rockies and, and Nuggets and Avalanche. And uh, it was amazing. I loved it. You know, older Katie's speaking to younger Katie right now. Uh, I shouldn't have given up as early as I did. Mm. This thing called Sirius XM came out, and everyone in the radio industry panicked. And I was like, well, this is the end of radio. I have no TV experience. I have no like, you know, newspaper experience. I guess I'll move into marketing. And so that's, that's where oh. my, my marketing journey be began was because I've, I thought radio was over. <laughs> that is wild. I never knew that. Interesting. Well, I can totally imagine. Right. And they, <laughs> they, they yeah. say uh, video killed the radio star. Yeah. <laughs> a song like that um but that's interesting so you kind of thought oh i better move over quickly and did anybody in your station to say what the heck i'm just gonna stay and now they're yep. huge is that why you said that yeah so one of my good friends andy he's still in radio he's uh the afternoon drive guy now um on a different radio station and, and then he's also one of the play-by-play -play announcers for the uh denver lacrosse team a television station. So he calls the games for the TV station for lacrosse. So he's okay. still in it. Um, and then somebody else in my, that I was worked really closely with, she moved over to TV, worked in TV for a while. And now that both of her kids have grown up and are off to college, now she's doing uh, the Broncos sideline reports. So she's, she went back into radio um, now that her kids are grown up because it, it's, it's a lot of hours in radio, but it's worth it. Like it's, it was fun. It was, like I said, it was my dream job. And I'm so fortunate that I was able to do it for four years before moving on to things that really, I believe set, set me up for success with my career now and what I'm doing now. I love it. Well, you know, you probably just got what you needed in those four years. I mean, obviously we never can live in regret, but the, yeah. you actually got the advantage over a lot of people that you have a, kind of a, a backstage pass to seeing how those people do and you have connections. So I'm sure that kind of brings it around to what you do now. You have access to people who they tell you like, oh, this is working and this isn't. So um, what landed you on focusing on Instagram? Because that's what we're talking about today. In fact, um, that's one thing that Katie said she's gonna be sharing as her tip today is her four post social media strategy. So if you're just tuning in, just make sure you hang on because we're going to hit the strategy and you'll leave this show today with actionable tips to be able to get that done. So um, so what made you land on Instagram as your platform of, of uh, choice? So this is one of the things I think a lot of entrepreneurs miss. A lot of mistakes that so many people make is that they start their business, they get a website, and then they post on every single social media platform known to mankind. Mm. And because, I mean, w people are on all the platforms. Don't you want to be seen by more people? And that's a huge misconception is what platform do you enjoy the most? What oh. platform do you enjoy spending time on? Because that's what we're giving these platforms is, is our time. And that's, I believe... I've, somebody said that it, that I was wrong, but I believe that time is our most pre, is the most precious thing for us. And if we're giving an app, this little computer that we carry around in our phone in our back pockets everywhere with us, if we're giving that priority over the people that we're with in real life, the things that we're actually like the beautiful things that are around us, if we're giving that to this thing. Well, you got to make it worthwhile, right? And so right. I enjoyed Instagram the most. And I don't have time to, at the time, I didn't have time to create social media content for all the different platforms. If you right. think about it, there's different ways to post on each platform. You know, whether it's the LinkedIn newsletter feature or Instagram reels or uh, going live on Facebook. Right. All of these platforms have different ways of showing up and that they prioritize within their own algorithm. Interesting. So if, if you're not willing to go all in on that one platform, then really you're just throwing spaghetti at the wall and you're really just wasting your time. Right. So for, for me, Instagram was it. Uh, I love the fact that I could see, I, I enjoy reading 
Uh, so I could see a picture, a beautiful picture, and I could read. I could see a carousel post and I could swipe and then I can read. And then reels came along and this girl who left radio because she was afraid of TV, um, I was like, great, now I gotta start making video. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I mean, that I found like there's a whole new way of express, like showing the Katie Bree side of what I do. I mean, I've, I have a lot of really nice pictures and I can make some really nice graphics, but I make a lot of weird faces I've learned and um, I make them in my reels and people kind of think they're funny, I guess. So, I mean, for me, that's why I think that you have to look at what platform you enjoy spending time on. How do you enjoy creating content? Like, like I said before, I wasn't on, I'm still not on TikTok because I can't imagine having to create that much content. And it sucks me in so bad that I can't so get away true. from it. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm like, true. this isn't good for my mental health. So I chose not to be on it. And so I mean, right. you have to think about what platforms do you want to be on? Are you willing to create the content the way that the platform wants you to create it? And once you know that, that's a really long answer to uh, why I chose Instagram. But once you know that, then you can really dive into the strategy of what's going to work and how you can post less so that you can, you know, go out and live your life with real 3D humans. I love, I love that. And you know what? That's such a real answer. Like, I think that sometimes people think, oh, I should like figure out where my customers are and this and this and this. And you're, you just made it so simple. Like, just pick the one you like, right? Because it's all our business. Sometimes we forget, you know, we're also like, what are the gurus doing? Or what's this? Or what's the best of this? What's the Dang, girl, like, I love it. Like, just pick what you like best and then you can dive deep and go attract the people you want. In fact, I remember watching a Gary V video once and he has his whole, what is his 98 cents or his two cents thing? Yeah, the, yep. Yeah, yeah, what was your- Dollar 80. Dollar 80. And can you explain that? Yeah, so the dollar 80 strategy is you give 90 people your two cents and- it's, and we're not talking about the three heart emojis or the three fire emojis or just liking it. Like, and I do have to say, like, for the love of God, please, the three emoji comment is dead. Please stop using it because it is not an actual comment. Um, but the dollar eighty strategy is where you go in and you leave a comment on ninety posts, and you would be amazed at what this can do for you, the community that you can build, the relationships that you can build. So I will go in to, I work with a lot of real estate agents. Uh, oh. And so I will do hashtag Denver Realtor. I'm not a realtor, but I will go in to the hashtag Denver Realtor and I will leave comments on their posts and just say, oh my gosh, I love this neighborhood. What a great kitchen. It's an actual comment about what they're talking about, what's in the picture. And it helps them in the algorithm because they got that comment. It's boosted them up for more people to see. But you know what else? Because I left a real comment, it's almost like a little billboard of Katie Brinkley. Well, who's this girl? She said this really nice comment. I'm just going to click here. And oh, well, she does social media. Look at all these amazing tips and the weird faces she makes. I like her. I want to follow her. That's so Cool. So if I can step back, just because I was yeah. trying to write the words so we, you can remember that, <laughs> you remember, go back to that. Um, did you say like you looked up the hashtag Colorado Realtor and that's when you found the people? The hashtag Denver. Out? Like, so I have. Oh, I'm sorry. Denver, this, yeah. yeah. Denver Realtor. So this is where if you know who your ideal client is, what hashtags are they using? What okay. hashtags are they using? Not. Like I could do hashtag social media strategy, but then I just would end up with a whole bunch of people doing what I do. If I know who my audience is, what hashtags they're using, and I go into that hashtag hub and I leave comments, nice comments. Again, none of this like buy crypto from so-and-so or three hearts or whatever, oh you know, like actually leave a comment for them. I'm going to stand out. And they're, I'm helping them. So you have to know what, ha yeah, perfect. Look at this. You're doing great here, Mary. I love this. <laughs> like, what I'm I'm doing it. <laughs> I, know, I can't, you can, I, I can't multitask like that. But I mean, what hashtags are your clients using? Yeah. And it's going to make a world of difference so that you can 
get in front of them and really just, and if, if they don't follow you, if they don't do business with you, so what? I mean, you help someone out in the algorithm. You were spending time on the app. It's going to help you with your, you know, posts going forward. So be mindful of. I love that. Who your, who your clients are. That you should put the hashtag that your clients use in your own posts or only when you're searching for them to give your two cents to them. It, it, oh man, with the hashtag strategies are give me a hashtag headache. But with me, I've been doing less hashtags. It's only about 10 hashtags that are uh, very specific to me and who I work with. And then I've been using a lot of SEO terms. So I will go into uh, Google keywords and just like, so this post is about this and this is who my ideal clients are. And I'll grab a whole bunch of keywords and paste those in there. And <laughs> that's that's a whole nother conversation because the whole SEO thing with Instagram is rather new. And oh. that's, um, yeah, so they're doing a lot of bumps out there for content if you have the right SEO in your captions. So your captions are extremely important. Oh, wow. So, so you're saying, are you saying and this is really quick and then we, I want to go to your four part um, strategy. Yeah. Um, are you saying it's better to put hashtags in your caption or in your yes. comments? In the caption. Okay. Always in the caption. All right. I'm bringing that in there. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. Okay. Well, let's get, cause I know people are busy. Um, so I want to make sure that put in, put, put hashtags. That's what that means. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we promised people that we were going to give them something um, incredibly brilliant today, which is your four post social media strategy. So can you walk us through it? Yeah, I think that a lot of, especially on Instagram, all you hear is more. Oh, well, it's, it's your fault that you're not getting as much reach. Well, all you need to do is post a reel for the next 30 days. Go live. Po you know, what you have to do is just engage for 30 minutes before hitting post and da, 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 da. And it's like, honestly, I don't know who has time for that, but I have a business I'm trying to run. And I, it, my business I, isn't social media, but like I still can't spend all day on social media creating content. And so what I do is uh, for myself and for my clients is this four post strategy. I call it the awareness to action strategy. And for Ooh. Instagram specifically, you can do these four posts, four posts a week. Um, you can just rotate it on like, okay, I only post twice a week. So I'm just going to like have them in this rotation. Or if, if you're one of those crazies that does post every day, I love you. More power to you. You can still do this strategy and okay. it just rotates. So post one is the awareness. How are you, how are you getting the most reach right now? It is still as much as we want to say that reels reach is down. It is still reels reels. If you think about it, it's that wide net. We're For throwing reels? our net off the boat and hoping to get as many, you know, shrimp as possible. We might get a shoe or a can. It doesn't really matter. We just want to catch as much things as we can in our net. And right. that's your reel. Okay. So with your reel, this is where you come in and say, okay, well, um, for example, I'd be like three social media tools that I use every week. And then I could like point and say, Loomly, Capshow and Flick or whatever. And I could just point. Right. And that was my wide net. So okay. people who are new to me could see this, this reel and be like, huh, I wonder what that Loomly thing is. I'll just like it, whatever. Well, now... The next post I'm going to do is going to be that tip or tutorial. And these are best used as a carousel post. So you will then make your carousel post going deeper into what it is that you briefly talked about in the reel. So for me, I might say uh, the way that Loomly gave me back five hours a week. And then I could say, it's a social media scheduler. It ha has a hashtag storage. It allows me to do it for all my clients, whatever. Like, And each slide is going into deeper about the thing I briefly mentioned in the reel. Establishing those people that I might be new to me that I caught. Maybe it was a can, but ooh, inside was a can full of shrimp. And I had no idea. And I gave them all this great information about Loomly. And they said, wow, Katie, that's so smart. 
I, I want to follow you. So now I've given them even more. The third post is the community building post. And I think this is the one that most everyone misses out on and forgets about. What, what is it that makes you different? How are you connecting with these people on the other side of a screen? Because nobody wants, nobody opens this little thing up and says, I wonder who is going to sell to me today. You know, right. this is your opportunity to say, this is why you can trust me. This is one of the things that I learned. This is something that I wish I would have known sooner. This is one way that I'm different than the rest. You share your story and what it's something that you've learned along the way that your ideal client is going to resonate with. I love that. The and what would, part, that would be like a, an image or what, what would you suggest? Typically, so this is can be either a single image or going live. A lot of times I will go live uh, because live video, I mean, what's more, you know, raw than that? People, you know, see you make the, say the ahs, the ums, and see you lose your train of thought or whatever. And live video is a great way to, to really Say, say, I'm a he real human on the other side of this screen. Right. Um, or you, or you can type at the same time you're recording a show. Yep. That's also really good at that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, They're wanting this to build. So people be like, ooh, what's number four? <laughs> so number four, you ready for this? Do you want to know wait, what number four is? Awareness is your first kind of post. <laughs> and that's a real, right? Something that's going to be a wide net that's going to bring people in. I'm just repeating as it's bonding it in my brain. Number two type of post is, while well, you take a drink of water, I love it, tip or tutorial. And it's great with a carousel because then they can read by swiping over, right? And that's also another reason I always like to say, never share reels to Facebook because it just takes away the coolness of it. Because on Facebook, it then goes to individual pictures like, Really? Like, you don't, yes. the whole yeah, thing about it is it's to swipe. That's the whole purpose of it. Is, yeah. Yes. Yes. It's, it's fun. To, like swipe it off. Like um, wipe on, wipe off. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? What was yeah. that? Uh, oh my gosh. Masabi? Oh, Daniel Song. Dan uh, yeah. I don't know. I <laughs> oh, Karate Kid. Karate Kid. Kid yes. I think Karate Kid, number two. Number three, it can be community building. Um, it's either an image or a live video that you're basically trying to uh, and repeat what you mean. Like by community, you're trying to build a community or relate to your community. Relate to your community. Okay. Okay. Awesome. And and right. like a lot of times I'll use, like, cause I have a run, bunch of really nice photography, like brand photography that I had taken. I'll use one of those uh, in there for a single image. It's longer. Almost think of it as like a mini blog. It's a long caption saying like, uh, you know, so for me, like going off of the examples that I gave here the, with the real, with like the loomly and stuff, my community building post for this would probably be, um, if I could go back and tell my younger self to do one thing when yeah. I started my business, right. you need to pay more attention to what you're posting on social media. Believe it or not, folks, I was posting a bunch of stock imagery and copy and paste captions, and I was afraid to show my face. It, and I mean, like, and I'm telling the story of, oh, man, yeah, I, I kind of been doing that. So the person who's reading it is saying, she made all these mistakes, too. I'm not that far off. Like, maybe this, this Loomly tool would help me. Maybe I do right. just need to have a social media you know, strategy in place. Maybe I, maybe I am, haven't been approaching it the right way. And that's why it's not working for me. So right. it's me saying, this is where I was. These are things that I've learned along the way, relating to them saying like, you can trust me. I love that. Yeah. So they can see it. I love it. And I love that you said, if you just fall, you know, fall down and make a funny face, like people actually are, they, they can relate. Cause they're like, I do that too. I guess yeah. she's a normal human. Okay. So what's number four? Number four is the action post. And this can be either to sign up for your webinar, to download your free gift, to listen to the podcast, to sign up for your boot camp, whatever it is. This is where you can ask them to leave the platform. At you, you're asking them to go listen to a podcast. You're asking them to leave. Nobody came onto Instagram and said, I want to know what, 
what random website I can go spend time on. Right. Know, nobody opened up Instagram to say, I wonder what podcast I should listen to today. They came on Instagram for a reason and it wasn't to leave the platform. So this is why those action posts, you can't do it time and time again. If you're constantly just showing up, asking people to listen to your show or to buy from you or to sign up for your, your ebook or whatever. Right. It gets annoying. It, it's really annoying. And so yeah. these action posts, you know, again, going off the example here and be like, are you ready to have a social media strategy and get more of your time back? Are you ready to have, you know, spend one hour a week? You can do that when you use a tool like Loomly. And I have a free month if you want to sign up for it. Grab it oh, by clicking yeah. the link in my bio or okay. whatever. You know, so yeah. it's like that's where the post would come in. It could be a carousel. It could be a reel. It could be a single image. It's kind of the wild card. You can do whatever you want with it, but you're asking people to take action. I love that. Yeah. And because you're right. If you like arrived at someone's door, like you came to a party, right? I always think of social media as being at a party. And what would you say it's to someone if you walked in their house invited you for a birthday party, you want to walk right up to somebody and go, hi, I'm Mary. I offer this service and you want to buy it from me? You want to buy it from me? Or if like you sell cups like this, um, I sell this cup. You want to buy it from me? You want to buy it from me? You want to buy it from me? Like they'd be like, oh my God, go home. Like leave my party, you know, and you walk up to every single person and you're like, do you want to buy my cup? Like, ew, 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 <laughs> right? So if you have to kind of think of social media as being in a social event. Yep. So um, yep. I love that. So sparingly. So one out of four times you're asking for something. I love that. Well, and if you think about it this way, all those posts are basically like tabs on a website. So that way, no matter who, if you're only posting four times a month, everything on there tells people how to buy, do business with you, what, a little about you section, a little about you so that they can connect with you. You've built out your thought leadership with your tip or tutorial, and then your awareness post is showcasing some of what your company offers. Like for me, you know, the, the tools that I use for social media or, you know, anything like that. So, I mean, this is where all of those are evergreen. And it's, it's right. something that no matter if somebody comes onto my page today and I don't post for a month, all the stuff that's on there is going to resonate with them you know, a month from now, right. 60 days it. from now. Evergreen, that's right. And so the well, last question I have for you, which I didn't, you don't have prep for this. So um, okay. I've seen some, based on that topic of not having to post all the time, but having something waiting that they can refer to like tabs on a website. What do you think of the nine post strategy where you have nothing but the nine posts that sometimes creates an image or each one is a topic but you're only doing a nine grid and you either you can refresh them or you just leave them. What do you think about that? Um, this is where it comes back to what platform do you have the most time for? What platform do you have time? Like this is where, again, I'm talking about Instagram. up until 2023, I only was on Instagram and LinkedIn. I wasn't on Facebook. Right. It wasn't well, until this year that I had the capacity to incorporate that because it's time. Like I have to spend time on Facebook now, you know, engaging, sending DMs, looking at Facebook groups, you know, have, responding to comments and stuff. Right. This is all time that I need to spend on the platform. And so yeah. if you, if you, if Instagram is not your platform and you want to just have those nine grids or nine tiles up there and you're like, I'm actually spending time on LinkedIn, connect with me there, then that's fine. Cause I okay. can just live there. But I think that uh, when, if you want to use social media as a tool, if you want to use it for more leads and have the opportunity as that, I mean, like it's the most cost effective marketing out there, really it is. And if you want to use it that way and have build out the right community of the right buyers, you just, you just, you just need one and you just need to, to post you, this four post strategy works on LinkedIn. It works on Facebook. It's it's all just optimizing the different resources that each platform gives you. I love that. And would you say do, would you say that those four posts are something you rotate? So it's the same type of post every like every week. You just do one of each of those four and then take a day off. Yeah. So I mean, and I'll I'll say this. Uh, March was a hard month for me. 
and I only posted three times, uh, but I still did my four post strategy and it was one of my best months ever because the way that I was posting, I was, I just, I was burnt out. I had just recently hosted an event and I was burnt out. I couldn't create any more content. So right. I was only posting once a week, but Love it. I was still going in for like 10 minutes and engaging. And because right. I was engaging with the right people, they would come over to my page and they'd see the, these, this reel, or they'd see this carousel and they're like, Oh, okay, well I want to follow her. So that way, when I was ready to get ramped up again into my four post strategy of, so for me and everyone's is going to be different, but for me, I post a reel on Monday, carousel on Tuesday. I either go live or do a single image on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, that's when I ask them to either listen to the podcast, sign up for my email list, you know, whatever. And then it starts all again on Monday. If you look at my stuff, it, you'll, you'll see it's pretty darn like regular <laughs> with this. Yeah. Um, That's awesome. And, and as I say, just following this pro, uh, um, thing. And then do you ever once in a while like throw in a personal, something about your kids or something on your Instagram or you just keep I, it I all? Only do, so that's what stories are for um, be, because with stories are gone in 24 hours, like I posted a picture of my daughter and I, uh, we went up to the mountains a weekend and I posted a picture of us like hiking <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was, it was great. I'm like, yeah, you know, escaping, you know, and just getting a little downtime and I, a picture of the two of us. And so that way people were like, oh yeah, I forgot she had kids or, oh yeah, this makes total sense. She's in the mountains. Cause all she does is talk about how much she loves the mountains or, or whatever, you know, and but it allowed your- them to into my like little personal world. Right. So you do that stories and then you can always save them to a highlight if you want to have family pictures there. Right. Would you do that? I think that one thing to remember about stories is that the people that see your stories already follow you. And so they've already said like this, you're my person. Um, And you, you continue to give them value in the feed. And then in the stories, that's where you can say, well, this is, this is who I really, this is who I am. This is, This is like, I'm giving you the keys to the back room, you know, so you can actually like see like, well, you know, here she is walking out to her car again. All she ever does is talk to me at the end of the day, but I do because I'm like, I need to do a story and I'll be on my way to the parking lot and I'll just pop in and say hello. So, I mean, that's it. it, Stories are a great way to really build connection with your people even further. I love it. Oh my gosh. You've given so much information in the last 10 minutes. I wish that we, like, we just had so much fun in the beginning and this is such the meat. I love it. I love it. I could talk to you all day, but you're no, a busy I loved, I love hanging out with you, Mary. And I love that we got to see each other in real life. And I know. We actually a had a I know. Take a picture. So you're fun. I know. All right, girl, well, I'm going to let you go. But um, again, thank you so much for your time. I hope if you've been watching this that you've gotten the nuggets um, of uh, awesomeness that Katie has thrown down. Hope you pick them up because she has been throwing them down. So um, um, so if you want to know more about um, Katie and how you can get help from her, obviously I have her website here, Next Step Social Communications. Is there any special place they should go if you if I, like a opt-in page or anything you'd like me to share anything with? Oh, yeah. I mean, just head to the, there's, there's the blog, there's the podcast, you know, uh, bump around and, you know, I hope that you'll connect with me on, on the socials. And uh, I hope that this was, I hope that you, you feel better that you have your get out of jail free card, that it's not your fault. You just need to have a strategy in place and pick, pick one platform. And as time allows, you know, you can add more in. I love that. Thank you for helping all of us collectively put our shoulders down out of our ears or what do you call it? relaxing <laughs> like oh my god because <laughs> seriously yeah life is short and you have to celebrate the people you're with and you know continue to build your business but you know what i think at the end of the day quality of life is much more important so that's awesome all right thank you again katie for being with us today and again go look for her at next step social and um as she said bop around in there and see what you need listen to her learn from her she's amazing and i'm blessed to call her a friend so without further ado um we will see you guys next thursday same bat channel same bat time I don't know where I come up with this stuff. But anyways, I wanted to thank you again for uh, joining me on the 
Brilliant Marketing with Mary show because we want to empower you to be in your brilliance. And we'll see you next week.